I. Now, I have been drawing for most of my life, but here's the thing. I was never passionate about it. In fact, I detested it. So, that was when I was in year seven, I hope. Uh, I think that's grade six, and that was grade four. Now, I didn't draw this, but I wanted to leave this here just so you can see it. So, back to what I was saying. I've been drawing since I was basically a child, and I did not like art ever. So, why did I take it as a subject in year nine? Because that's what I did. Well, this is my story. It was September 9th, 2017, the first day of my freshman year, when nearly everyone was excited, yet apprehensive. I mean, why wouldn't anyone be excited and apprehensive for their first freshman year? New subjects, new interests, new classes. You have to make new friends since your old friends don't get along anymore. Ouch. And a new environment for us nervous individuals. And there I was, with my knees knocking and butterflies in my stomach. I too joined in with the rest, pretending all was set. Just little did I know how completely wrong I was. Now, before freshman year began, we had to choose a list of subjects we'd want to study for the next three years. And at the time, I'd chosen to study economics, business, accountancy, and art. Oh boy. I don't know why, but at the time, I thought they were good choices for me. I didn't really like art. I don't know why I took it. So the day passed on as teachers introduced themselves and the subject to us, and their assurance made me feel confident. Until the blow came. Art class had arrived. Now I said I did not like art. I took it as a joke, thinking I could use thinking I could do something that I actually like during the art class. We walked into the art room, and we were greeted by my teacher, who at the start itself was exuding seriousness and passion, which is an odd combination. We took our seats, and she began by very, very clearly stating, art is not a joke, it is not a joke, so don't you dare take it as one. You probably know how I felt at the time. I was scared. It went against what I thought art was to me. Fast forward, she gave us our first task, to sketch this. And obviously, me not knowing what I should be doing, this is what I drew. <laughs> a curved square. Uh, I did put a signature on it. I don't know why at the time I did. I thought I did something great. So she was horrified. She looked at the drawing, looked back at me, looked around the class and at everyone's drawings, turned to me and asked me, how did you end up in my class? I know she yells a lot. <laughs> I was scared. I was nervous. Shivers went down my spine. I didn't know what to say or do. So I just went back to my seat. And the only thought that crossed my mind was that I officially was the actual worst art student ever. Now, when the class was over, I was making my way out. And she helped me back. And she tried talking to me. She told me, Warren, you are not the type of person to be associated with failure. I want you to catch up with the rest. Improve yourself. You can do it. All you need is passion. And who knows, you can become one of the greatest students, one of my greatest students. Do not give up. That day, my entire perspective on the subject changed. And I could only think about the passion she had for what she taught. 
and how evident it was in her teaching. And I quickly found myself practicing every single day on the sole purpose of drawing a better sphere. And soon enough, I did find results. Now, I obviously still had a long, long way to go, but for my teacher and I, this was our form of success, the passion I developed. This is known as instigated passion, when a passionate external party induces a passion in you. My teacher was mine, yours could be different. She changed the I hate art to I love art. It was something that gave me passion to be determined to conquer the inevitable, to be one of her best students. Now, when something is easy, I'm sure you all know you get pretty bored doing it after a while. But when something is hard and makes you work for it, you tend to develop a liking for it. Now, passion is success, period. Passion is success. You cannot be successful without having passion. No person who was successful in a field was not passionate about what he did. That is the rule, point blank. And you can instill this in your life by doing anything, really. And I'm not talking about instilling passion to wash dishes. But for students who find particular subjects tough, this is extremely helpful. Now, many students around the world, including me, are not great at math for many reasons. One being it's extremely calculated, and that makes it tough for us. So what teachers of math need to do is to make subjects like these extremely simple to understand by filtering out all the big words so that an average student like me would grasp concepts easily, which I don't. Now, this not only helps how I review the subject, but how I score in it. And I may develop passion for math, but I'm not sure that'll happen. Now, what helped me try to learn math was mixing it with my favorite subject, all-time favorite subject, art. I always liked art. What helped me, really, was the fact that I could see shapes in my math, like learning area and perimeter, or doing anything really in that sort. It became a breeze for me, as I already used math in art, like finding the proportions of a human face, or an apple, or translating a smaller image on a larger form factor. These are all topics in math. Now, I've used this technique, and my constant Ds turned into consistent Cs, which although isn't very impressive, but hey, at least there's improvement, and that's what we're looking for. So you too should try cross-linking two subjects one you're good at, and one you're not so good at. And create a mix. This will act, it's, it's very helpful, actually. It helps you develop a passion, and that's what we're looking for, because passion is success. And I've already emphasized this, and now it's on the teachers. Teachers, too, can use my idea in their classes. Now, another example would be math and science. For students who ace at math, but don't do so well in science. Topics like calculating moles in chemistry, or finding the volume and density of anything, or calculating magnification. These would be a math student's strong points, because they work well with numbers. So a science teacher must put as much math as he or she can into the subject for that particular student, because he's good at math, and that's how he understands these concepts. My friends also use this technique, but I haven't gotten back to them, so I don't know any updates, but it's proven to help people. Now, is that an ant? I think that's an ant, and I'll get back to that ant. But passion, as I said earlier, is instigated. My teacher instigated passion in me. But passion can also be locked up in you somewhere. 
like finding a lock you threw away in yourself a long time ago, still having the key. This is exactly what happened to me earlier this year. I was sitting bored in an accountancy class, as I always was in accounting, and I just so happened to look over at a biology board on cells, and I caught myself invested in it. And at the time, I could only think about how my friends spoke wonders about biology and how they had a passion for science. Confused, I went home, and I found myself in a loophole, researching, gathering information, reading the textbooks, and just getting interested in the subject. Why? I hated science. My entire life, I failed every science test, and every time I failed a test, I made a pact that I would never hear the word science in my life again, and nor will I take it in year nine. So why am I interested in science all of a sudden? It's the passion they had for it. It's how the passion from my friends and from the teachers of science came onto me. Now I found the lock, and I had the key. So what do you do with the lock and key? You open the lock, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to switch from commerce to science. I know, scary. Literally every person I spoke to said that. They either ridiculed me or made fun of me or called me dumb and stupid, and no one really supported it. And I spoke to a few science teachers, and they were supportive, but still had a feeling of doubt in them, which is obviously understandable. Now, my last form of support was my very own mother. And when she heard I wanted to make a switch, sorry, mom, but she went off about how I wouldn't be able to do science and how I wouldn't succeed in it, as I didn't do so well in commerce anyways. If I didn't do so well in commerce, how would I do well in science? And obviously broken, since I expected her to support me, I went to my supervisor, and she told me, unless I pass entrance tests for all the three sciences, I wouldn't be granted the switch. I said, OK, uh, what do I learn? And she told me, year nine and year 10 topics, finished. You need to learn all of them, and you'll be assessed on it. Now you tell me. How can a commerce student like me learn year nine and year 10 topics of all the three sciences on my own? I don't know also, but it's pretty simple. A supportive friend and lots of YouTube help. My friend, who is one of the smartest people I know, helped me and came to school during the holidays. Well, not holidays, but not many people were at school, so I'll call it a holiday. Many she, he came to school during the holidays and taught me all the three sciences in the library. We sat for hours on end with no clue of what time of the day it is already. And we learned all the three subjects. Now, fast forward to present day. It's been eight months since I made my switch. I passed my tests. And honestly, I love it. I love it way more than I did in the subjects I initially chose. Everyone was shocked when I passed my test, and I felt great proving them wrong. I still had the key to the lock I threw away, and dumb of me, just before the 10th graders had a final exam, I wanted to make a drastic shift, not only in my subject choices, but my future. The difficulty science had the support of my friends and my teacher. All of that together instigated passion in me. Now, I'll talk about that ant soon, but do you know Messi? Oh, what I'm asking, you probably know Messi. He couldn't afford shoes, let alone a ball to play football. But when someone bought him both of those, he aced at it. He put, proved everyone wrong. Everyone put him down and told him he couldn't make it. He couldn't be the best footballer ever. And he is one of the best footballers. So, Haza al-Mansuri was the first Emirati scientist and astronaut to enter space. He studied where he wanted to go for most of his life. And he and another Emirati 
were chosen among 4,000 potential candidates. His hard work and determination paid off. And lastly, my own mother, a passionate teacher of English. She's been teaching for almost 20 years. She used to play roles uh, in her basement when she was younger, emulating a teacher away from the crowd because people would make fun of her, but she proved them wrong. And this is where she is today, a passionate teacher. Now, these are all forms of passionate individuals. Not only that, but the success that followed them inspired others. This is why Messi is an inspirational footballer and inspires many people around the world to become footballers. This is why Haza has inspired people in the UAE to learn aeronautics, or why my mother inspires her colleagues. This is because passion radiates. It never stays in the same place. Talking about that ant, it's gone. But the ant is constantly moving, just like passion. It's constantly moving. It never stays fixed in position. That's how I got a passion for science. That's how I got a passion for art. It's from passionate individuals, and that radiated onto me. Passion, passion, passion. Everyone says you must have a passion, follow your passion. And <coughs> so sorry. But it is the truth. Passion is success. Passion diffuses from yourself and on to others. This is why teachers have the most important job in the world. You are responsible for what you teach to your students. Do you know what I don't like? People who are not passionate. Teachers who are not passionate. If a teacher is not passionate, how can you expect your students to be passionate? And that's what irks me, unpassionate teachers. Ugh. Teachers have to be passionate because passion radiates. You cannot expect improvement in your students if you have no passion for what you teach. And teachers, please be the one to help your students on the way when they're learning. No one helped, no teacher helped me. My friend helped me learn science. So from this point on, I spoke about mixing subjects, right? So you mix two subjects, one you're good at, the other one you're not so good at. Make sure to use ridiculous motivation, because that's what Messi and my mother did, and that's helpful, because that instigates passion in you, and pe people made fun of me, but I ignored that. And lastly, teachers, be the one to instigate passion in your students. For all you know, you could be their last form of support. This is because passion is persistence and perseverance. Thank you.